Welcome back to our video series on the Play Framework using Scala. We left off last time with a login screen that pops up and we could type in a username and a password and click and at that time nothing happened. Now, part of the reason nothing happened is because we didn't have it do anything and we actually have a props.doLogin method that we are supposed to call when they log in. And so theoretically when this gets refreshed if we type in a incorrect login okay nothing happened uh, and if we correct pass in a correct login okay it took us to a blank screen which given the amount of code that we've written the blank screen is definitely correct the uh, Ah, the other is also correct, and the reason it's correct is because we, while we have a login message and we set it, it is not part of our render method. So, now it will be. Okay, so now the login message would display after the login button, which is basically how we had it happen in, in other parts of the code. Okay, uh, I'm also gonna take these two imports which I put there in the login temporarily. Uh, I'm going to move them up to the top, and the simple reason is we, if we only needed them for that one method, I'd leave them there, but the creating a user is also going to send a user data, um, and so it's going to need to serialize the, the same thing. So I know we're going to need this in another place, so I'm going to move it to a, a broader scope. So we can do a login. The only problem is that when we do a login, it switches us to this and we don't see anything. This is where we need our task list component. So let's go ahead and create a new file. Task list component dot Scala. It will be a React component. Once again, we could go look at our JavaScript for version four and see what types of things we had in, you know, well, unfortunately we can't see what types of things we have in properties because JavaScript doesn't tell you what types of things you have in your properties. Uh, but we can see what types of things are in our state. We had a sequence of tasks, the text for the new task, and the message that would be displayed to the user. So, I am just going to assume, well, we know that we're going to have a do logout that's going to come in here. Right, because we have to have the ability to send back to our parent the fact that we have logged out. There might be more that we need in there, but we know that we need that. We're going to have our tasks. Uh, now, what is the type of these tasks? It turns out that inside of this file, we also have a task item. That's because we need these IDs. And so I think that tasks is actually going to be a sequence of task item. Uh, and I just have this funny, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it, we'll leave it at that for now. Um, we need to know the text for the new task and we need to know the message that we're giving back to our users. Okay. And those are strings. Our initial state can be an empty list with two empty strings. And when we render this, what are we going to see? Uh, lots of times, it turns out, the renders are just complete divs. Once again, bring in everything so that we have uh, easy access to all of those elements. And we can make this happy because we said we're going to have a logout function and that should make the code compile 
Okay, uh, if only we had a logout button, which I guess I could go ahead and add, uh, just because we know we're going to need it. And all that it does is when it is clicked, we call props dot do logout. It's interesting to see how much that amount of code does for us. So what do we expect? Well, okay, A, we fixed it so that if you have a bad login, it tells you the login failed. Okay, that's good. Uh, what if you have a valid login? It takes you here, there is a logout, and that brings you back to here. Okay, cool. So, so there is some functionality, we can move between them. We don't have any task lists yet, so we would need to populate our tasks. If you look at the way this happened here, the load tasks did a fetch that set the state. And that's pretty much exactly what we're going to need to do. And we need we did that when the component mounted, okay? Because we don't have the data for all of the tasks. We can do the same thing here. The lifecycle functions exist. The component did mount is a nice lifecycle function that we can define inside of here. And I think our design of saying this calls a method called load tasks that returns unit is a good approach to this. And this is supposed to go through and load our task for us. Well, you know what? Version six had to load tasks too. Here's the, uh, here's the code for doing that. We have this fetch inside of here. And so we can go to our task list component and paste this. Task routes does not exist currently. Um, so what do we need to replace task routes with? Well, in some ways we're not gonna replace it with anything, but we need to have access to it. The task routes is just a value that we can bring in here. Uh, let's see, this is I need the document. Who knows, I might need the HTML too. So let's go ahead and bring those both in. Okay, uh, we need the execution context. And then these other things are things we're not going to do because we're not running through all the tasks and building this here. What we're doing here is we are setting the state to be state.copy of tasks equals tasks. And there is no JSON deserializer because we do not have this import for our reads and writes. I'll paste it right there under the items. Okay, so if there's a fetch error, we get that printout. Otherwise, we just set the state and then all the tasks should be rendered up inside of render, which doesn't happen yet but we're about to add it. Okay, so what happens inside of here? Well, we need to run through all of our tasks and have uh, elements display for them. So this is an unordered list and it should be filled with list items of the tasks. So we can, that's, that'll be our first thing that we will go for. State.tasks dot map and actually I happen to know that we need keys here and so I'm gonna zip these with the index and use a pattern match on this so we have our task item and its index in the list and what I want to generate for each one of these 
is a list item that has a key. And this is one of those React requirements when you build a sequence of things you need to give them all unique keys and if you fail to do so react will give you some nasty messages about it and then the text itself is the task item dot text okay now we still need to have the ability to click on these to delete them that's not in the code but I want to see if this much works I believe that when we were editing version 6, when we were done, we left some items in here, and indeed we did, and now it displays. Excellent. Okay, so we have the ability to display our task list. Uh, we don't delete, we don't add, we can't create a new user. But each of those are just elements that we have to add in, um, and things are falling in place fairly quickly now. We'll come back in the next video and we will add the ability to uh, add elements and then click to delete and we'll finish off with the creating a new user.